Father, I just pray on every campus, God, those who are in the middle of a storm, Lord, I just pray that you, they would know that you are with them, that your presence is there. You're gonna get them to the other side. God, I pray they would put their trust, their hope in you. God, that we will pass through the storm. God, I just pray you bring them comfort and strength and hope right now in the midst of their storm in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may all be seated on all of our campuses. Welcome all eight campuses, especially our Clearwater campus. Come on, give them a big shout. The reason I say that, they had to go to three services last week. They're running out of room. We're trying to get phase three uh, started, so we'll be praying about that. I know many of you have uh, committed to it. Hey, we're on a, a, a series that I love, and I love the title, Answer the Call. Right? God wants us to answer the call, and what that's all about is this empty chair. You know, we go, what, did they leave a chair up there? What happened? This empty chair we have there last week and this week and next week because this represents that person in your life that maybe doesn't know the Lord or needs to return to God. That person, that family member, that son, that daughter, that husband, that coworker, that they're just waiting on an invitation. See, God calls us to reach people. People reach people. In fact, this empty chair, some of you might know that my wife was in that empty chair. She was 18 years old. She was graduating from Hillsborough High School. She did not know God. In fact, she says she was almost like atheist and she just really didn't know him. And one of her friends took the risk, had the courage to say, you know what? I care for Debbie enough. I've got to tell her about my, my, my savior, my friend Jesus. And they began uh, to, to talk about Jesus. And some of you know that, that my wife, the summer of that year, I believe 76, she accepted Christ. Now what's cool about that, you have no idea the power of you planting seed and the impact and the domino effect that it can happen because three months later, I meet Debbie. And many of you heard my story. I mean, she might have been far from God. I was far, 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 far from God. And, and she began to tell me about Jesus and, uh, and, and, and you know, the rest is, is history. And through her, I gave my life to Christ. And think about that. Grace Family Church today started with her friend, Martha, who had the courage to say, I've got to tell my friend. I have to risk rejection. I'm going to risk, she may not want to be my friend anymore, but I have to tell my friend. My, my prayer for us today at Grace Family Church that we would overcome our fears. That's what we'll talk about to make sure that we can share. We have no idea the power of an invitation. You have no idea when you hold that card up in your hand or our stadium Easter uh, uh, event to reach your friend. You have no idea the person you're gonna invite, the impact it could have on their life. So don't, don't underestimate your influence. Don't underestimate the coincidences God's gonna put you connected with people even in the next few weeks to invite them, okay? So, uh, in fact, the Bible tells us we, are, uh, we have to answer the call. Here's what it says in Matthew 5, Jesus speaking, you are the light of the world. Come on, turn to someone on every campus, tell them right now, you are the light of the world. That's what, that's what he says we are. It says, a town built on a hill cannot be hidden, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. We don't hide our light. Some of us, we kind of hide. We come to church like jack-in-a-box Christians, woo! And then we go back to, and we hide it. We come to church, woo! And we, no, God wants us, that was terrible. <laughs> maybe, we, maybe we'll use last service, I don't know. But it says, instead they put it on the stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So one way we witness is by the way we live our lives, the way we treat others. People go, wow, they're different. And, and, it, and it glorifies God when they see the difference. But it's not just the way we live. He wants us to open our mouth and speak. And that's the part that we, sometimes we get scared of. Paul says in Romans 1:16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. Can I just tell you that there's been times I've been ashamed of the gospel? I've been in a 
certain situation, maybe we're on a certain group of people who were really too cool, and I, yet I knew that God wanted me to say something, but I was kind of like, well, I don't want to act like weird around these people, and, and I would hesitate, or maybe there was a little shame. Am I the only one that's felt that way before, or anybody here? Yeah, all of us have had those situations. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, because it's the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. Now, 1 Corinthians 3, 6 through 9 is very powerful. And if you believe this, you'll realize the pressure isn't on you to save anyone. We only deliver the message. We can't convert anyone, force anyone, but God wants us to be a part of it. So read with me. It says, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. God's the one that makes it grow, right? So neither does the one who plant nor the one who water is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their own labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. Now, I know sometimes you plant a seed, maybe you try to share, or you've been, I'm going to tell my friend, my family member, my coworker, and it didn't go well. In fact, you think it went terrible. They, they, they looked at you like, weird, or what's this guy doing, or would you please shut up? And you felt like you failed. Let me tell you, you never fail when you plant seed. You don't fail. Okay, I, I remember the time when I had first gave my life to Christ. I used to go out to some of the local high schools and share with the kids at lunchtime. Because they, they allowed them to go off campus. So at Chamberlain High School, I knew where the kids would hang out. I'd go and, and pass out literature and do surveys. And every once in a while, I'd have a little music stand and I would tell them the gospel. I'd share with them in a group of 10, 15, 20 sometimes. And some would listen. Some would just laugh. Some would mock me. But some were just mean. This one girl. I'm telling you, I was there every Tuesday. This one girl, not only was she mean, she would... She cussed like a sailor. I, I hate you, you dumb, blah, 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 blah. Get out of here. We don't want to hear. I mean, she was just not very happy. And I would get ready to leave, and she'd follow me to my car like, get out of here. I'm like, man, should I be doing this? I don't think, you know, you know what's funny? The people you think aren't listening are the ones that maybe are hearing. Because I, I tell you, this is a, three years later. This is back in the 70s. Three years later, I get something called a letter in the mail. You know, letters, a little stamp. Okay, a letter in the mail. This, this girl, um, I get this letter, I open it up, and, and she had red hair. I'll never forget, bright red hair. She goes, you probably don't remember me. I'm the little red-haired girl. And she begins to tell me that every time she went home after me speaking, she would cry in her bed at night because she knew I was telling the truth. She was wrestling in her soul, but she had this big front, this big facade. How many know people can have a facade? Do not ever be discouraged when you plant the seed. And she goes, Craig, I am now a Christian. I love Jesus. And you were one of the first ones to plant the seed in my life. Amen? God's the one that makes it grow. So here, here's what I know. God is working when we don't see him working. Come on, he's working. You got families and friends, you go, are they ever going to get it? They're watching you. They know something's different. Uh, God's word is sharp and it it convicts. And and we need to believe that God's word is working. Okay, so it's never futile. It's never a failure when we begin to share our faith. Now, let's talk practically for a few moments. Just things to help us. There's fears that we have. How do we overcome some of our fears of sharing our faith or inviting someone, maybe Easter at the stadium? The first thing that sometimes we fear is we fear this, that well, I don't know enough. I mean, they might ask me a question and I'm not gonna know the answer and they're gonna make me feel really dumb. Here's what I always do when I, and, when, and people say that, or when I was first a new Christian, they'd ask me a question, I'd say, you know what? I don't know, but I'll go ask my pastor. See, it's okay, you don't have to have all the answers. In fact, God just calls us to be a witness, right? See, in Acts 1, it says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. What, is, what does a witness do? They tell their story. They put them on the stand. Well, here's what I saw. This is what happened. You're just telling your story. How many of you know that people are interested in, in stories? And so no one, listen, here's what I know. No one can argue with your story. 
They can argue, I don't believe the Bible is God's word. I don't believe this. I don't believe that. But they can't argue your story. You can say, look, I can just tell you what you may, you may, I don't understand about all that, but I do know this. I was lost and now I've been found. I was, I was broken and now I'm healed. I was blind, but now I see. I can tell you, I don't know about all that. But you're trying to challenge, but I to tell you this, God's real and he's changed my life. They can't argue with that. They can't argue with that. <laughs> the, the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman that Jesus started talking to, I mean, she's had a five, 10, 15 minute conversation and she recognizes he's a Messiah. She gets all excited about it, right? She goes back to Samaria, tells these people, hey, this guy, he's the Messiah because he knew everything about me. And the Bible says Jesus stayed there for two days and they had a revival in Samaria because of a woman's testimony and story. She knew nothing about the Bible. She goes, hey, I'll just let you know, man, this guy changed me. So your story you don't have to argue with people. Uh, you don't have to know, have a theology degree to share your faith. Now, I think it's good to begin to learn to defend your faith. But see, I, I just know this. God is looking for availability, not just ability. Are you available to say, okay, God, I, I'm a little scared. I don't know what I would say, but I want to be available. I want to be one of those people that answers the call. Because God calls all of us to be a light. You don't have to have all the answers. So you can say that, hey, you know what? Just come and see. I, I, it's hard for me to explain it all, but come and see at Raymond Jane Stadium on Easter. Uh, we'll do a tailgate. I'll cook a big breakfast for you. Whatever you need to do to get your friends there, right? That's just what you do. I got, a, I got a friend who owns this company, and he said, I invited all my employees. I said, come to the stadium. We're going to tailgate. We're going to have the best breakfast buffet. I'm going to cook it for you. And he said he can't believe the response he's getting from people who don't go to church. But hey, they'll go to the stadium. They want a free breakfast. It's just, you know, it's just one of those things, right? So number two, fear that my life isn't perfect. I can't share because those people know my past. Do you know who the apostle Paul is? His name was Saul. He murdered Christians before he became a disciple. Pretty rough past. In fact, God will take your past and use it for his glory. I mean, I have a past. I live in Tampa. I've lived in Tampa all my life. In the first 19 years, I was far from Jesus, which meant I did some really stupid things in my life. And I went to Hillsborough High School, and, 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 uh, and I, my friends in high, at high school never saw me becoming a preacher. Believe me, all you got to do is read what they wrote in my yearbook. <laughs> Nothing about Jesus in there. And so when I became a Christian and actually started this church, I've had several people come just to go, I just had to see if it was true. <laughs> it's okay. You know what I know people appreciate? They want authenticity. They hate fake. People, people want, they're looking for authenticity, not perfection. They're not looking for a perfect life. They're looking for a person that can show them a little hope. They can say, hey, you know, you know where I was at? Look where God's taking me. And he's thinking, if he can take you there, I know he can get me there. Right? So we, 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 we keep it real. We, we're authentic in our lives. We, we don't, we're not self-righteous. We're not religious. Please don't be religious. Don't use religious words for people. Don't use Christianese. Keep it real, man. Talk like, just talk like you regularly talk. I don't know what happens. People get, get Jesus and they get weird. <laughs> don't be weird. Be normal, but be you, but be authentic. And, and so your life isn't perfect. We're, I tell people, we're all on a journey, right? Tell them, hey, I've been on a journey. There's been some rough patches. But people hate fake. They don't like self-righteousness. God will use your scars for his glory. He will take your stars, your scars, and turn them into stars. He does that, okay? I, 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 guess I just know. So don't let your past keep you from doing what God's called you to do. Here's a third reason why maybe we struggle uh, sharing our faith. This is probably the biggest one, if we all are honest, because no matter who we are, the fear of offending someone or, or ourselves being rejected, right? I mean, I don't want to offend people, well, but we don't want to be rejected either. No one loves rejection. You can't say, well, you know, I'm, I'm fine. No, you're not. no one likes to be rejected. And so we fear that maybe this friends, these coworkers, some family members, if I get more bold and maybe more courageous and I, and I want to share, my, I'm a, I, I, we're afraid that they'll just 
you know, go, that's that, there's that crazy Jesus guy. Stay away from him. And again, you don't have to be the crazy Jesus. You can just be the normal Jesus person, right? And, and so there's this fear uh, of rejection, this, and this rejection sometimes keeps us from sharing the most important news these people could ever need to hear, the fear of offending someone. I'm trying to think, what's gonna offend them when you really realize that the gospel is, literally means good news, right? I mean, I can give you a list of the gospel's good news benefits. One is, how about this one? A never-ending source of healing and love. You know, when I accepted Christ, it was a continual healing and, and love that I received from him. How about this one? The gospel, it's good news. Forgiveness for all of my past. Wipe clean. God forgets it. He throws into the sea of forgetfulness. He erases it. Man, I don't know about you. I don't know how much you sin, but that's good news for me. He erases all of it. See, see amen, you can clap. It's right, that's good news. How about this one? A heavenly father who, who loves me unconditionally. On my worst day, God loved me. Man, that's the gospel. That's the good news. I mean, I don't think there's a lot of people gonna be offended by that. Okay, how about this one? A free gift of eternal life. God offers us a free gift because of what Jesus did. This is part of the, part of the good news. Power and purpose in this life that God gives you, not only does he forgive your past, he gives you an ability to start over, to start fresh, to start new, a new life. Anyone in Christ is a new creature. Old things pass away and all things become new. How many know people love, could I start over? Yeah, you can start over in your life. It's good news. I'm just trying to encourage you a little bit that yeah, offense, I mean, some people, no matter what you say, are gonna be offended, right? But here's what I question, what do, what do we have to lose? by having a little more courage, a little more tenacity, a little more, you know what, I'm not gonna worry about what they think about me. What do we have to lose? Temporarily, some rejection. Oh yeah, you could lose a friend. I mean, Debbie could have lost me. She was afraid to share with me because she says I was really cute. She goes, but she had to tell me right up front, listen, Jesus is first in my life. You'll never be first. You might be second or even third. You'll never be first. She wasn't afraid of losing me because Jesus was more important. Can we get to that place where we're willing to be that kind of witness for God? Okay? And so, what do we have to lose? Oh yeah, temporarily we might be persecuted, but Jesus says anyone that persecutes you for my name's sake is blessed, right? Now, what do they have to lose? Let me tell you, they have a lot more to lose than we do. And I wanna read a scripture to you that um, it's in Revelations, and it talks about the end of the world, the end of time. And this is kind of a scary verse, so unless, you, well, if you don't know them, don't hold their hand, but if you know the person next to you, hold their hand, this might be a little scary for you. Revelations 20, it says this, and I saw a great white throne and the one sitting on it. The earth and sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne. Are you getting the picture? This is intense. And the books were open, including the book of life, and the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up its dead, death and the grave gave up their dead, and all were judged according to their deeds. Then death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. This lake of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found, recorded in the book of life, was thrown into the lake of fire. If God's word is true, this should put an urgency in our hearts. There's something eternal at stake. I don't think your friend would ever think you were offending them if their house was burning down and they were sleeping in it and didn't know it. You'd go knock on the door and you'd say, get out, your house is burning. They wouldn't come to the door and say, you offended me, right? Uh, this is, in fact, can we do this? I, I believe on every campus right now. When I, I read this scripture, I just think for some, you, you looked and you went, whose name was not found recorded in the book of life. And you're thinking, I'm not sure if my name's in that book. 
I mean, I've been a good person, a good Baptist, a good Catholic, a good Methodist. Those are all the wrong answers, by the way. And you're going, man, I, I don't know. Can we, we don't have to wait to the end. I want to make sure if there's anybody on every campus that says, I want to know my name can be in that book. I'm telling you right now, your name can be written in that book in this very next moment. And you would say, Craig, how does that happen? Simply by submitting and re, simply by just humbling yourself and saying, God, I know I've fallen short and I know that I need a savior. See, the only people that need a savior are humble people. Humble people are people willing to admit, I've maybe done life my way and on my terms and God, I wanna do it your way and on your terms. And this thing called eternity and this thing about this book of life, I wanna know my name is in that book. It's not something you do, it's something you believe has already been done. That's what Jesus did, man. Jesus, the Bible says, died on that cross and on that cross were your sin and my sin and Jesus was judged so I wouldn't have to be judged. And he becomes your defensive attorney when you accept Christ in your life. Your name is in that book and you'll never have to fear what is being written in Revelations right now. If that's you, come on, every campus is by your heads. I know we normally do the end of the service. We're doing it now. Just bow your heads on every campus, everybody right now. We're gonna pray a prayer for those that wanna be sure. And you can just say this silently if you want, right with me, just in your heart. God hears you. God, I know that I fall short. And Lord, I know that I need a savior. And I believe that you love me so much, you gave your son Jesus to die on a cross for my sins. So Jesus, I humble myself right now. I admit I need your forgiveness. Thank you for dying on a cross for me. Give me your Holy Spirit. I want a new start, a new life. And today, I believe, today, I accept you. Thank you, Jesus, for loving for me, loving me and dying for me. Amen. Now, you can go, what does happen? Well, the Bible says, whomever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And I believe in that moment, your name was written in that book of life. Come on, man, that's a good thing. So you give me some practical do's and don'ts when sharing. I mentioned a few of these already. Uh, I, I, the reason I know a lot of these don'ts is because when I first became a Christian, I was very passionate and I didn't have a lot of wisdom. So I can tell on myself a little bit, but for, first thing you wanna do is you, you don't wanna argue with people. I used to argue with people. Say, God loves you. Well, I don't, no, you need to, he loves you. He really, and I get in arguing with them about God loving them. Yeah, it's just kind of a little intense, right? Don't argue with people. Don't be weird. I already said, don't be weird. You don't have to be weird. But there's enough weird people out there, right? But don't be weird. Okay, don't argue. Don't condemn people. You don't condemn. We don't, we're not self-righteous. We've been saved by the grace of God too. We didn't deserve it, but he gave it to us. We can't be condemning. That doesn't mean we can't speak the truth in love. Now, sometimes when you speak the truth in love, they'll use words like, you're condemning me, you're judging me. I, I'm not, I'm just giving you what the Bible says. But you know what I mean? Don't argue, don't condemn. Uh, don't force it on people. You can't force people. You know, you, you want to plant seed, right? You want to be salt. You know, you sprinkle a little salt on something, it flavors the food. A little salt will make them thirsty, right? So when you're having maybe an opportunity or a conversation, it can just be 30 seconds or one minute. But after that, you notice they're like, you can just tell sometimes they've had enough. You ever see that looking? Back off. Let them want more from you, not you go, oh man, I'll never talk to that person again because they force, don't force people. Don't lock them in an elevator or in a corner of a room and go, you, you know, no, don't force people. Just l let it come to you, right? Salt is good, but you know, you don't pour the whole salt shaker on a piece of food, do you? It's, it's salty, right? I mean, we gotta be careful. You don't want to muddy the fishing hole. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Muddy the fishing hole is like you blew it so bad you were very offensive, and now they don't want to hear anything about God or Christianity for a year because of you, right? I mean, we've got to be careful. In fact, some of those people, 
that maybe you have done that way, I believe humility is a great bridge. I remember when I first came to the Lord, I was very enthusiastic and a few people, I, I didn't really deliver the message the right way. One was my mother. I came to Christ and, and I really, it was so real. I wanted my mom to know so much, but I just didn't deliver it the right way. I, I, my mom, first time I talked, I said, mom, you just need to accept Jesus or you're going to hell. She looked at me like, well, who is this guy? And I, a while later, I went to her, mom, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't want to, that was, even though it was true, the way I delivered it, you know what I mean? So I, I, I just was able to, to mend that a little bit, okay? So don't force it. Here's what we do need to do. Do listen. Listen to people. Tell them, hey, tell me your story. Tell me about your life. Where are you at on your faith journey? I mean, what do you really believe? And they might tell you they believe in Martians or UFOs, and you just sit there and listen. You don't have to, oh, that's, that's interesting, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just, but, but be, a, be a listener, okay? Uh, here's what you do know. You do trust God's word won't return void. Isaiah says this, so also is my word. I sent it out, and it always produces fruit. It shall accomplish all I want it to and prosper everywhere I send it. God's word, you never fail when you share your faith, your story, one seed. You never fail. That seed is planted in their life like the little red-haired girl. It's planted. Do share your story, right? Learn to share your story. In a minute, two minutes, here's where I was at, here's where I'm at now, and here's what God's done in my life. And I tell you, learn to share your story. It's so, so critical. Be, be, learn to be a fisherman. The Bible says be fishers of people. And fishermen know how to use certain bait, right? You got to have bait, you know. Uh, even when you invite people to church, you know, man, we got killer music. Preaching's bad, but the music's awesome. Come, come out, you know. Or, hey, we uh, use certain bait. In fact, in fact, for Easter, Tampa Stadium, right? We got, you don't say, oh, got to hear Craig, Craig Altman. No, no, they don't know Craig Altman. They know Tony Dungy. And Tony is going to do a five-minute part of the message, so, and, and the state, man, we are setting you up. I mean, we are setting you up so good with the Ray J Stadium. I mean, invite them. Say, hey, let's do a tailgate party, and I'm going to cook breakfast for you, and you're going to come, and it's going to be awesome, and, and you're going to hear Tony Dungy, and it's at the stadium, and it's free. And, and man, just, there's so many ways that we can uh, invite people. Thank you, Lord. And it's not just about Easter. It's, it's learning to be a person who answers the call. That in our life, in our ordinary lives, every day we're gonna cross paths with people and the Holy Spirit sometimes is gonna impress upon you, that's the one. You may pass by five, but the God go, that's the one right there. Jesus did it, he passed by many and go, that's the one. All I know is we can't save anyone, but you just obey. You pray, you fast, you plant a seed, and you have no idea what God can do, amen? I mean, look at the Martha speaks to the Debbie. The Debbie talks to me. The power of an invitation, the power of planting seed. You have no idea the seed you plant, who it's going to touch, and the effect it's going to have. Can you imagine you planting a seed in a man or a woman, and that person coming to Christ, and then they lead their family to Christ, and then their sisters come to Christ, and then their sons and daughters, their granddaughters. Do you see what can happen? It's a domino effect, and it all starts with you. Answer the call. Ask God for courage. Ask God, lead me, Lord. I want to be one of those that answers the call. God, who is in that empty chair that I need to be praying for, fasting for, and inviting. Amen, let's pray. Go ahead, bow your heads for a moment. Every campus. Father, thank you so much for this time. Thank you, Lord God, that you care more than we care for our friends, our family that need Jesus. Give us courage. Give us boldness. Let us not be afraid. Help us, Lord, to share our story. Help us to trust you that you'll do the work. God, this week even, these next few weeks, lead us, Lord, to those that we can share, that we can invite, that we can pray for in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys.